Welcome to this video, I'm Lok Chung and I'm going to tell you why I love shooting with HLG. Well, I'm not a professional filmmaker with decades of experience, so why should you listen to me? Well, because I'm a full-time YouTuber with a decade of experience. Ding! And as you know, on YouTube, uh, things are really competitive, so you have to have good image, but still you have to pump them out quick. So I know what is it like doing quick turnaround job, which is YouTube. But for people who need to get things out quick, or other YouTuber, this is going to be useful for you, I think. I hope. Now let's go back in time when the CDU and CDME have been using our camera at the default setting for shooting video. And now I'm shooting with the Panasonic S1H with the default setting. And this is what we used to get, really contrasty video. And actually back in the days when I used 5D Mark II and Mark III, this is what you get. You don't have fancy cine profile, you don't have log obviously. Limited dynamic range, limited color space. What you see is what you get basically. You can use this straight away, but that's nothing you can do with the picture. I mean, not much. And then later I switched from Canon to Sony, Sony A7S II and I thought wow, S-Log is the way to go because it, what's the point of changing from Canon to Sony back in the days if you are not going to get those high dynamic range but then I find out, I painfully find out S-Log is so painful to work with uh, after, uh, well Starting with shooting it, I have to put in a really heavy ND filter because it starts with uh, ISO 1600 and then back at that editing, I find out so much work I have to do with every single clip uh, for each video, for each like 10 minutes video, I have to spend like an hour more to just to do color correction that's really not for YouTube production especially you don't have time, you don't have manpower no, that's painful and then I try to find a balance and I find Cindy profile, Cindy like or flat or Nikon or Eterna on film, uh, Fujifilm. These color profiles are much more easier to color correct, but then I still got a lot more dynamic range than the default setting. So for a really long time, I have been using Cindy, Cindy like, Eterna or flat. Well, at the end, guess what? I settled on HLG, surprise! Well, HLG is not meant for color question, it is meant for HDR content as you as you know. But I have never shoot for HDR deliver. I only shoot HLG and then convert it into Red 709 in computer. Why would you do that? Because XHLG got a much wider dynamic range, much wider color space than Red 709. So when you convert it back to Red 709, you still got all the great color space and dynamic range you can play with when you convert it back to Red 709. It is actually Atomus that get me into shooting with HLG. For example, this uh, Atomus Ninja 5 and this Atomus Shinobi. Well, this is a recorder and this is just a film monitor, but both of them are HDR display and of course they support HLG shooting and make shooting HLG so much easier because it got some quirk on shooting HLG and I'm going to show you right now Setting exposure for shooting HLG you can say it's a little bit weird but also you can also say it's not too difficult because well if you look at the histogram it looks like it underexposed but in fact this should be a correct exposure so how do you deal with that? Actually, a lot of cameras have a uh, simulation. The, this is called HLG Wheel Assist. You've got two modes. And you can see this exposure is actually quite alright. If you set the exposure according to the histogram, this, you can see this is really overexposed. 
But then, I think it's because XLG XDR is supposed to go really bright. So in my experience, overexposed shot, it doesn't really matter in the, when you're editing, you can bring it down. I will show you later how it doesn't really matter. I mean, or even if I put it to ISO auto, which I do this a lot. This is overexposed, but in editing, I can just bring it down. It is really forgiving. Now, if you want to dive in, really set the exposure weight, of course, you need a few monitor, especially like the Atomus Shinobi. This is a really affordable uh, few monitor and it supports XLG and this is an XDR monitor. So, of course, it supports XLG. When you turn on the log or XDR support here, set your camera XLG BT2020 and now this is an actual XLG image you are going to get. Even though you are going to convert this to Red 709, which I will, but this is what you can see the full potential after you convert it to Red 709, after you do color correction, rather than just guessing it from a native display. And of course, if you really don't want to dive in into the exposure, you have to set up with a waveform monitor. As you can see, this is from 0 to 1600 because this is HDR, it's not the normal 0 to 100 anymore. And this is lit, this is not IRE. In general, you should set the mid-tone to around 25 lit and then the highlights almost 200. Other than that, because this is a HDR monitor, you are actually looking at the full spectrum, the full HD hlg -ness on this screen. So you will know what you are going to get in the final result as even though if you are going to convert this to Red 709, Red 709, but the beauty of HLG is that you can get it really serious with a chart, this and that, but then it is still really forgiving for even if the exposure is not right. So you have got some HLG content, congratulations! And after you import them into your computer, what do you do with them? How do you color correct them? Now I'm going to talk about Final Cut Pro with the built-in really great XDR2. But with other editing software, you can just get free download LUT from the internet that converts XLG into Red 709. Now in Final Cut Pro, before you import your footage, you should of course you have to create a new library. After that, go to here and make sure you are using the Y gamut XDR. Now that's a setting for the whole library. But then now when you create a new project, if you are delivering Red 709, remember set it to Red 709 here when you create your project. If you forgot to set it to Y gamut, it doesn't matter. You can change it anytime before you start doing color correction. File Cut Pro still try to show you what it should look like on the HLG monitor, even though my iMac is not HDR. Because this timeline is Red 709, when you put it into the timeline, it will look overblown because the HLG file go much brighter than Red 709. When you look at it from the Red 709 standpoint, of course it is super overblown. If you want, you can grade from here. You can bring down the highlight. As you can see, there's a lot of highlight you can bring down. But that's a great tool in File Couple. As I mentioned, if you go to... Uh, I, I set a hotkey for that, so I, I don't even remember. Where is it? Oh, color. Yes, HDR2. Double click and it applies HDR2. Set a little bit of this and that. Done. Thank you for watching. See you next time. It's already done. Look at that. I mean, it's how, how much work is that? Now, another project I shot before is I shot Kai and Six Feet Under, really famous Instagrammer. Now, I shot this video on the Panasonic S1 with S mode. I didn't shot with manual exposure. So, you can see how the HLG is quite forgiving even if the exposure is not bang on, even if you use auto exposure, this is still much more easier to grade than not. So this backlighting situation, I apply the HDR2 with a keyboard shortcut that I set up. Highlight, shadow, 
basically, basically this is useful. I mean, useful. This is usable. You can tweak a little bit of the color curve. And done! That's it! Hands in the air! Let's look at another part. This one apply the HDR2 and then highlight shadow. A lot of time it just highlight shadow mid-tone. Done. Hands, hands in the air. How is this not great, you tell me? Well, you may think that I'm shooting with a full-frame camera. The Panasonic S1 is not a cheap camera. But how about that? I have shot that footage with this camera, the RX100 Mark VI, not even the latest uh, RX100. Uh, I've shot HLG, of course, and let's see. Let's see the footage. Let's, let's create it now, together. There we go, bring it in, and then... Uh... Oh, by the way, I have been saying that I have a hotkey for applying the HDR2. You go to the effect menu, go to color, go back to HDR2, uh, control click or right click on it, and then make default video effect. I basically use the hotkey for apply the default video effect. The hotkey is just option E at HDR2. So you just press option E, it applies the default effect that you set, in my case, HDR2. And then I just quickly set a little bit this and that. And boom, it's done. The, the, the dynamic range is actually quite great for a little camera, a little compact camera like this. And uh, yeah, it's done. How much time I spent on that? 10 seconds. So that's it, this is a really quick video about shooting and editing HLG because it is quick and easy to shoot HLG and editing HLG. Uh, it got a lot wider dynamic range than shooting with the default setting of your camera, but then it's so much easier to edit than log. Well, obviously shooting log is better for series video work or if you got the manpower and time to work with log. But I think HLG is great for anything that shooting log seems overkill. As I mentioned, it's good for quick turnaround or it's good for run and gun, even it's good for if you just shoot with auto exposure. But with uh, Atomus Shinobi or Atomus Ninja 5, you can still achieve the exact exposure that you want. For example, if you've got a control environment, you, have, you want to control every bit of the lighting condition, you can do that with Ninja 5 or this really affordable Shinobi because they have a HDR monitor. You can see exactly what you are going to get. So if you haven't tried out HLG, if you want something that quicker than not, then you really should try out HLG because it is so easy to use. Even a YouTuber like me can handle it, so you definitely can. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank <music> you.